שלום, צהריים טובים. אני קודם כל מודה לכם שזה כבוד גדול שהיום אני נותנת את ההרצאה שלי פה בכנס ככה כזה גדול ומקסים ומעניין. תודה רבה. הייתי רוצה להמשיך בעברית, אבל היום אני עושה, עושה את ההרצאה שלי רק באנגלית, אז אני אמשיך באנגלית. The central interest of my research has been who were the Jews of Iraq before the establishment of the state of Israel. Of course, this question is way too general, and certainly the answer would vary from one Iraqi Jew to another. Their identity or identities were diverse. and uh, intertwined. Self is a complex of aspects. Its components sometimes contradict one another. Some insist their Arabness, and others are more concerned about their Jewishness. Naturally, there is an alleged Iraqiness too, though the Iraqi identity itself is still in question until today. When we ask the question, who were the Jews of Iraq before the establishment of Israel, in this process of rem remembering and tracing, we cannot avoid impact of historiography, how we reconstruct the past, and uh, according to the needs of the present, we actually reconstruct the past. It seems even more so when we look back on them while living under a certain <coughs> socio-political influence. I would like to cite an example. Samir Nakash, a writer who was born in Baghdad in 1938, immigrated to Israel in the beginning of the 1950s, and since then kept writing only in Arabic until he passed away in Petah Tikva in 2004. Uh, he once stated in an interview, and I quote it, I'm a Jewish Arab. Before in Iraq, I was a Jewish Iraqi, and uh, I'm a Jewish Iraqi here in Israel, too. Of course, he does not represent the entire Iraqi Jewish community. I'd rather say he, his case was a phenomenal, extreme case, and uh, one should consider the social condition of Israeli society and his uh, uh, days in Mabala, which made him stubbornly define himself as Jewish Iraqi in the end. But still, his words suggest various questions. What is Jewish Arab or Arab Jew? What is Jewish Iraqi or Iraqi Jew? Or if such things ever existed, is this something he made up for filling his emotional void in Israel? There is another important implication in this Nakash statement. No matter what he defines himself, him being Jewish was a crystal clear reality. But then another question raises, what is being Jewish at all? Or more specifically, what was being Jewish in Iraq before the establishment of the State of Israel in the first half of the 20th century? My research basically attempts to shed light on the aspects of Jewishness and its representation during the 1920s. The two major central questions are, one, how the Jews of Iraq defined themselves subjectively, and two, how they were defined by the social conditions objectively. Both are inseparable and have interacted with each other, but today this paper particularly focuses on the first point, how the Jews of Iraq defined themselves and represented themselves subjectively. This paper specifically focuses on an Arabic Jewish weekly journal, or more accurately, a weekly magazine, Al Misbah, which means Hamenora in Hebrew or Lamp Light in English. It was edited and uh, published by the Jews in Baghdad from 1924 to 1929 and uh, identifies itself as a, a literary scientific and social weekly magazine. It has been published under the supervision of editorship of a Jewish lawyer, Salman Shina, and uh, another young educated Jew, one of the leading Jewish intellectuals of this, this period, Anwar Shaul. 
And while Shaul has worked as an editor of Admis Bach from the first issue of 10th April 1924 to the beginning of the 1925, Admis Bach was issued on every Thursday until the middle of 1926 and uh, irregularly printed 15 more issues until 1929. Attempts have been made quantitatively and qualitatively by scholars of various fields to draw a comprehensive pictures of the Jews of Iraq in the early 20th century. <coughs> and uh, several studies have discussed the role of al Misbah, how it worked in the Jewish community, and have, those several studies have drawn different conclusions. I'd like to cite two examples among them. The first example is seen in the studies of Dr. Nesim Kazaz. He put the emphasis on Al-Misbah as a nature, as a, uh, Al-Misbah's nature as an instrument of expression for the Jewish community against anti-Jewish atmosphere. Though he admits the Iraqi Arab patriotic nature of Al-Misbah, he concluded that this positive attitude towards integration was strategically initiated by the community's leadership, and uh, he calls it as Iraqi orientation. Another example can be found in the studies of uh, Professor Reuben Sunil. He describes the view shared by the Jewish intellectual of the 1920s as an Arab cultural vision. According to his analysis, particularly during Anwar Shaul's editorship, al Misbah had been a platform for this Arab cultural view, and uh, it was supposed to be shared by both Jews and non-Jews of the entire Iraqi society. Now, those two examples symbolize the distinctive nature of al Misbah as a platform for the Jews by the Jews in the larger Iraqi context. The emergence of a modern journal for a particular community, in this case, Jewish community, subsequently subsequently contributed to the creation of more diversified cultural life in Iraq. And in addition to that, uh, these two examples and the way they narrate the historical background probably represent two significant and at the same time quite opposite uh, perceptions of the Iraqi Jewish community and its history which emerged after their immigration to Israel. When we see al Bah as a tool of verbal self-defense, the Iraqi Jewish community appears to be like a detached political entity which had no organic relationship with the larger Iraqi society. On the other hand, when focusing on the cultural openness and the, their emphasis on Arabic language, the image of the Iraqi Jewish community seems like quite prosperous one, which enjoyed the equality and success and spontaneously participated in the Iraqi social life. While going through a fundamental trans transformation under secularization and modernization, the Iraqi Jewish community's traditional attitude towards the surroundings, by that I mean the traditional attitude not to get involved in the politics, started to change as well. Again, I'm back to my question now. How Iraqi Jews define themselves, particularly those educated young Jewish intellectuals who are actively involved in Arabic literary sphere and specifically in, Ar uh, in al Misbah. Their use of language, especially some particular words by which they indicate themselves, might suggest us an insight. The most frequently used words for the Jews themselves on the pages of, of Al-Mizbah are Al-Taifa and Al-Israeliyun. Throughout the six years of publication, Al-Mizbah had ch changed its orientation. When Anwar Shaul was an editor only for the several months though, the magazine sustained more culturally open symbiotic nature but after his leave, under Salman Shinnet's editorship, Jewish Stalinist tendency became noticeable. And with this shift, the perspective of the world community 
also changed its shape. In the first couple of years, there are more expressions implying its connection, the community's connection with other communities, but in the last years, this word is solely used in the context when the community is more concerned with their domestic interests. For example, on the very first issue of al Misbah, there is an article titled as Our First Word, Our Plan. It starts as follows. Oh, peace upon you, generous readers. Now, great number of motivation have urged us for the establishment <coughs> for the establishment of this magazine and called us upon participating in the field of journalism. And unexpectedly, we followed the inviting voice and responded to the calling voice with generosity and absolute conscience. Concerning this motivation, already made, mentioned on how much it is great, but the greatness is much greater than, uh, than one imagined. Then it continues to list up their missions. I just quoted the first one here. For nation of nations, a people of peoples, a community of communities, the most common way for making progress is, we are sure, to enlighten individual's thought and broaden individual's ability of sense first and foremost. When an individual goes forward, naturally the collective too advances. Beside academic enlightening work, newspapers and magazines, what can really be a help for individuals' advancement and the upturn to the peak of maturity? In front of you, there is a white paper. On it, those who enlighten and thinkers among them put their pens and will compose things which will become like stars sparkle in the dark. End quote. In this section, the word, uh, the community, a type, uh, appears as one of the some more communities in the territory. Here, a question of the readership remains. Who actually read this magazine and to whom Al Misbah was addressing its messages? On the article before Pesach, Misbah celebrates Firstly, Jewish readers, and send a blessing to other general readers, too. There is one example. For the Pesach in two days, al Misbah declares sincere wishes and blessings from our heart, especially for the Jewish people and generally for their readers. This sort of congratulatory addresses are seen very frequently on every sort of occasion and not limited to the Jewish festivals. In the last couple of issues of Al Misbah, it seems like the word community started to appear almost only with the word Jewish, Al Istayidir, as seen in the following article titled as an advice for the thoughtless people. In this article, published in 1929, uh, the article says like this following, it has become known recently that in Jewish community, a type of the Israelia, some frivolous, fri frivolous people, thoughtless people, introduced a movement which is aimed to renew the religion of Moses and their goal of this heresy, pre preserving their personal benefits, is known as well. Following the controversy which has happened in the community, this rumor has already been spread. For the thoughtless people, describing their, their movement as innovation is desirable, and they believe that such a description will attract the thoughts of other citizens to their direction and enable them to acquire the appro approval for high position by this new invention." End quote. Here the word community and the context in which the word is used turn out to be solely Jewish and they are represented as a complete, completed social political entity. Many of the Jewish intellectuals who once contributed to the pages of, of Al Misbah later wrote about this period and their activities 
in their memoirs. For example, Anwar Shaul in his memoir states that he could become a noble Iraqi citizen and a Jew who is faithful to his Jewishness and proud of it. Another ma major contributor, Ezra Haddad, once said, we are Arabs before we were Jews, and it's frequently quoted. Salman Shina, in his memoir, noted that most of the people who opposed to Zionism became major supporters of Zionism in Israel. So there are various ways to remember and to reconstruct what they were doing during the, the, the time when they were still in Iraq. And uh, after a sudden, depart sudden departure from Iraq to Israel in the early 1950s, various interpretations of the past emerged, and uh, in such a situation, <coughs> revisiting written historical materials such as al Misbah would help us hold another viewpoint to observe the changing aspects of the, their Jewishness in the first half of the 20th century. That's all. Thank you very much. So